Yo, good morning from Santa Marta, Colombia. Usually every morning I'm taking a run along the beach to the end of the beach. There's actually an outdoor gym at the end. But today I decided to take a break day, do a nice chill little walk. And so why not make a math video in the process? And in this specific question, we are going to be dealing with the slope of a tangent and we are given the function f of x equals x minus 7 over x plus 8. There's a couple of parts to this question. We have to find the actual slope of the tangent at two different x values at x equals 0 and at x equals negative 9. And then in part b, we have to find out what coordinates on the function does the slope of the tangent equal 5 over 3. Now remember from this section what is the formula for the slope of the tangent that we have come up with. It is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. For the first part, we have to find the slope of the tangent at an x value 0. So a couple of different ways you could do this. You could plug in 0 right away for the a value and then get the slope of the tangent directly. However, I don't suggest doing it that way because we're also going to have to find the slope of the tangent at a different x value, negative 9. And then we're also going to have to find x values when the slope of the tangent is equal to 5 over 3. So I would get a general expression for the slope of the tangent first. So I wouldn't plug any specific values for a yet. I would just keep the a as it is. It's going to be more algebra initially, but then in the end, it's going to save you a lot of time because you're not going to have to do this process multiple time and so for the first part of the difference quotient the f of a plus h we just plug in a plus h for all the x values so we'd end up with a plus h minus 7 over a plus h plus 8 minus and then we're just subtracting the function as it is f of a so a minus 7 over a plus 8 and then all of that is going to be over h now instead of dividing by h notice it's like we're dividing by h over 1 i'm just going to multiply that entire numerator i'll put in brackets by 1 over h whenever i'm dealing with rational functions in this process i prefer to do it this way because it's going to be more obvious and how h's are going to cancel out so now at this point what we got to do is take those two fractions and combine them into one and so notice is that the common denominator, the lowest common denominator, are basically going to be those two denominators multiplied by each other. a plus h plus 8 times a plus a. And so that first fraction, we have to multiply the numerator and denominator by a plus 8. And then in the second fraction, we have to multiply the numerator and denominator by a plus h plus 8. And then once you do all of that algebra, then the numerator is just going to simplify to 15h and then notice now obvious to see the h's are going to cancel out remember our goal is always to get rid of that h in the denominator of the difference quotient you could plug in zero for any remaining h's and you'd end up with 15 over a plus a squared so just pulling up on the gym here this is how it looks like I mean, they got dip bars, they got pull-up bars. Can't complain, it's good enough for me. Hola, buenos dias. So usually I'm doing a workout and then I'll go for a swim. The swimming area is actually blocked off with a line that's just running through. And so basically I've just been doing laps back and forth. After doing the workout, I do a couple laps and then head back and then get my day started. So it's been a nice routine. So anyway, I'm gonna chill out here for a little bit, just do some stretching. I'm not gonna work out today, but I will go into the water and then I will check you in a bit to finish the question. Base. All right, lunch has arrived. We got coffee, ceviche, and paracon. So in this particular area, El Rodadero, the beaches are super nice, much nicer than in the center. However, the trade-off is there isn't as many cafes to work out of. The infrastructure is not the best here. However, this particular place this is one of the better places that I found. I've also found some other cafes and I found another restaurant that's on the beach too, but the other restaurant it was outside and then the cafes, they don't have this ocean view. So overall, I would say this is the best place. So let's finish off part A of the question. So we have the expression 
for the slope of the tangent at any x value of a. And now they're asking, what's the slope of the tangent at an x value of zero and at an x value of negative nine. So at an x value of zero, if you plug in zero into the expression, you'd end up with 15 over 64. If you plug in negative nine into the expression, you'd end up with positive 15. Now again, you can get the same slopes if you plugged in the a values directly at the beginning in the difference quotient, but then again, you'd have to do that algebra twice. But you can do it that way if you want. I'd maybe even suggest doing it that way if you wanna practice doing your algebra with these kinds of expressions, you'd get the same slopes 15 over 64 and 15. You can also show this graphically. So if we were to take this function, notice it's a linear over a linear function. So a little bit of review from advanced functions when we were graphing rational functions. Uh, notice that the horizontal asymptote is going to be at one, vertical asymptote is going to be at negative eight. The x-intercept is going to be at seven and then the y-intercept is gonna be at negative seven over eight. And so if we made that graph, basically at an x value of zero, if we drew a tangent there on the function at that point, what would happen is the slope of that tangent line would be 15 over 64. And then if we also drew a tangent at the x value of negative nine, the slope of that tangent would be 15. Again, this part is not necessary to graph it and then draw the tangent lines, unless your teacher, of course, asks for it. Uh, I just wanted to do it just so you understand visually what is happening, not just doing the algebra and not really getting what's going on. I feel like just showing it graphically, showing visually what we're actually doing, helps you to understand better what's going on. And then as a result, it makes the process of doing these questions easier because you kind of get the top down view or the bigger picture of what's going on versus just getting into the weeds of the algebra. All right, so that's a wrap for part A. I'm gonna go and finish this lunch, do some work, but uh, later on, I'm gonna go to a different beach that's uh, still in this area, just a little bit further down and it's a lot less packed. And so we'll finish part B there. I will see you then. Base. Uh, can't even describe how refreshing that water is. Nice little boat there. Usually that's not around. So where I was before is down there, El Rodadero Beach. There's just these uh, little areas to chill and usually they're just purely empty. All right, so let's do part B to the question. So the way we would solve for these points is we can basically make the expression for the slope of the tangent that we got earlier, make that equal to five over three, and then we could solve for the A values and that's gonna give us the X values where the slope of the tangent is gonna be five over three. So notice that we have two fractions on both sides of the equal sign, so we could cross multiply at this point. And then you're gonna to get to a point where you have a plus eight to the power two is equal to nine. And then to get rid of that exponent, we could square root both sides. But when you square root the nine, you gotta remember the square root of something, the square root of a positive number, is gonna be plus or minus. There's gonna be a positive and a negative three. So then there's gonna be two cases, either a plus eight is going to equal positive three, or a plus eight is going to equal negative three. And so when you solve for those two a values, you would get negative five and negative 11. So those are the two x values on the function where the slope of the tangent is going to be five over three. And then if you want to get the corresponding y values of the coordinates, you would just plug those two x values into the original function to get your corresponding y values. And then that ends up being the answer to part B. So not too bad of a question. Again, it's just more so that initial algebra, uh, finding a general expression 
for the slope of the tangent. But once you have that, then you could just use that for the rest of the question. And the algebra isn't as bad then. The worst algebra is at the beginning when you're simplifying, when you're trying to get rid of that H in the denominator of the difference quotient. Anyway, I'm gonna go chill out for a little bit and then I'm gonna head back to some more work. So I will catch you in the next video. Enjoy your day. Peace.